Hello, everybody. This is Zerta with Zerta MTG, and I'm back at it again today with another historic deck tech. So for today, we're going to be going over Golgari Citadel Storm. And uh, this is a pretty straightforward deck. Your main goal is just to uh, land a Bolas of Citadel, get some scrying off of cards like Woe Strider, and use things like Blood Priest and uh, Bastion of Remembrance to gain enough life to continue casting spells using the Citadel's ability. The backup plan is to just drain your opponent out using a combination of uh, natural card advantage creatures like Wall of Blossoms and Jade Light Ranger, as well as a uh, Lanoir Visionary and Collected Company to get enough creatures to uh, deal on enough damage with Woe Strider or with uh, Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Um, you are capable of, uh, I believe, as early as a turn 4 Citadel win, using a combination of Ramp Creatures and Phyrexian Tower. Um, so to go over the numbers here, we have two Gilded Goose and two Lanoir Elves. I'm not really sure which one I'd like more. They, As a uh, four of, they both have their own uh, unique uses. Gilded Goose is better as a way to uh, combo off with Citadel, as it both gives you two permanents and can gain you life whereas Lanoir Elves can tap for mana uh, more consistently. Uh, you play it on one, and then if you use it to drop a turn to Visionary, you can uh, still tap it again the next turn to cast another spell. However, it also can never tap for black, uh, so that is the reason be behind the 2-2 uh, two -two split of Goose and Lanoir Elves. We want a large number of turn one mana dorks, and I'm not sure which one to go uh, heavier on, although maybe I should go 3-3 three and, three and uh, drop down on some of the... Uh, other cards, not really sure yet. Moving on, we have four Blood Artist. This is one of our key combo creatures, so we are maxing out on it. Um, it also triggers off of our opponent's creatures dying, which is very relevant in uh, Sacrifice Mirrors. And it's also um, a very good way to just uh, win the game even without having a Citadel out. Next up is Priest of the Forgotten Gods. This is our only form of removal and is also a very good mana ramp card in this deck. Um, as sacrificing two creatures to get down a citadel is just something that's going to uh, be paid back very quickly by the citadel, as well as drawing cards uh, to help filter cards off of the top, and sacrificing, obviously, to trigger your blood artists and your uh, bastions. Next up, we have four Paradise Druid, just probably the best uh, two-mana mana dork uh, currently in Historic. The Hexproof means it'll live. It's not a bad attacker. It taps for black mana, so... It's all around just a pretty good card. We have three copies of Wall of Blossoms. Uh, this is to kind of hold the hold the fort against uh, fast aggressive decks, as well as provide some card advantage and a body to uh, sacrifice. So it's just kind of here as a way to uh, get deeper into our deck, try and draw our Citadel or our Collected Companies, as well as uh, being a useful body that sits around afterwards. Two Bastion of Remembrance provides a uh, creature to sacrifice, as well as provides a uh, um, Blood Artist effect where we can drain our opponent and continue our combo. Woe Strider is the only creature I know of in Historic that lets us just sacrifice a creature for no mana, and uh, therefore is kind of an auto-include in any sack deck, um, as well as the fact that it lets us scry, which means we can uh, scry away dead lands on the top when we're comboing off with the Citadel. We have four Lanoir Visionary, as this does help uh, ramp us up into Citadel, as well as um, drawing cards for it, kind of helping to clear the top if you have some mana left over. It's just all around a pretty useful card to have, and uh, we're not too embarrassed to have it, as we just need a uh, critical mass of bodies. And we have two copies of Jade Light Ranger. This is one of the better cards you can uh, have on top with a Citadel, because no matter what's on top of that library, you can uh, essentially scry it away. And if it's a land, you'll just uh, get it added straight up into your hand. So it's a pretty powerful effect once you're comboing off. It's also not a bad beater if you drop it on turn two or even on turn three, and you're never embarrassed to hit it off of a Collected Company. Speaking of, we are playing four copies of Collected Company, uh, just one of the more powerful cards in Historic. Definitely a build around, but one that is very, very rewarding when you do it correctly. Um, so key hits in this deck include Blood Artist and Woe Strider, and really just any combination of creatures that can help us uh, 
fill up the board for a Bow Loss of Citadel activation, or even just a combo kill using Woe Strider, Bastion, and Blood Artist. It's more about getting the bodies on the board for uh, four mana and a single card, and uh, it really pays dividends in this deck, as well as being an excellent card to cast off of your Bow Loss of Citadel. And the star of the deck is, of course, Bow Loss of Citadel. This card lets you cast spells that aren't in your hand for life instead of mana. This is essentially not only uh, paying life for cards, but paying life for mana. And, well, some of the most powerful cards in Magic's history let you do that, and uh, they've never done it at the same time. Channel would let you uh, exchange one life for one mana, which Bolas' Citadel is letting you do. And uh, things like Gristlebrand, or uh, what is it? Uh, Necropotence would let you pay life for cards, which Bolas of Citadel is essentially letting you do. So you're paying life for mana and cards, which is just an absolutely absurd deal and completely and utterly broken. Um, the only thing stopping this card from being an absolute powerhouse in Historic and uh, kind of breaking everything in half is the fact we don't really have a uh, good... I shouldn't say good, this deck is very good. But we uh, don't really have a amazing shell for it yet. This is a very good shell for it, and uh, whenever you draw Citadel, you'll see exactly how powerful this card is. But um, without something like a uh, Storm payoff, it's kind of held in check because we don't have the uh, normal things you'd see in older formats, which would uh, completely break this effect. And moving on to the mana base, we have only four Woodland Cemetery, four Overgrown Tomb, six Forests, five swamps, and two Phyrexian Towers. Um, I have some concern about uh, only playing 21 lands, and also I'm kind of tempted to uh, swap one of the Phyrexian Towers out for a uh, Castle Garenbrig so that we'd be able to um, draw a few more cards or clear the top for Citadel. But uh, as it stands, we don't really need that many, and uh, this is what I've seen basically every list run as far as land count goes, and I haven't had a real problem with it. Um, this is probably one of the best decks I've played on this channel in quite a while, with the exception being blue-white control, uh, and I'd heavily, heavily recommend uh, looking into investing in this deck if you're looking for a uh, strong contender. I believe that both Bolas' Citadel and Collected Company are only going to climb in value, and this is probably going to be a pretty good shell for them moving forward. And uh, that's it for today, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.